So yesterday I did this video about how the head of RT, the editor of RT, was saying that free speech is an illusion. And, and you want to check that out if you haven't. I'm going to talk about that and I'm going to reference that. By the way, there's also something to see here. Uh, this empty thumbnail, this is actually about propaganda in uh, how the Russians do propaganda in France and what they've done uh, to try to manipulate the media there. So if you haven't, if you just thought that there was there was nothing here, there is. Um, but I want to talk about this one here with free speech as an illusion. So I'm going to show you two little clips, and then I'm going to show you two comments, and springboard that with uh, some of my PowerPoint slides because they they directly apply the things I talk about in class directly apply to what we're talking about here. Okay, so just just stay with me here for a moment. Okay, so here's um, the editor of RT, and she's talking about free speech. So I'm going to play this briefly, and then I'm going to skip ahead to another guy in here that is saying something, and then I'm going to show you the comments and tie it together. She knows what she's talking about here. You grew up in a closed system. In the 1980s and part of the 1990s, you still believed that freedom of speech existed in the necessity of this alleged freedom of speech here, in the same way they supposedly have it there. Okay, and what she was saying here was free speech doesn't really exist. Uh, we don't have it here. It's an illusion. You don't have it, you know, they never had it over there in the West. I mean, it's just like they say that they have it. There's a difference. Like, we actually do have free speech. Now, is there a slant to the media? Sure, there's a slant to the media. Everybody understands that. And if you don't believe that there's a slant to the media, you have a whole different problem set. Because there is different types of media, like uh, MSNBC says one thing, Fox News says another thing, and then even major newspapers, right, like uh, the, the New York Times, the Washington Post, we know that they're slanted to the left. The Wall Street Journal is a little slanted to the right. Um, and then there are some that try terribly hard to be as cent in the center as possible. But even they have perspective, and you can't get away from perspective because you're human. So even the most neutral have a bit of perspective, even if they try to be neutral. And what I mean by that is even choosing the stories that they choose, they, you know, what I choose and what you choose may be two different things to focus on, and even that is a little bit of a slant. But there's facts there, and there's journalistic integrity there, and that's the difference. Okay, so listen to this clip, and then we're going to watch this guy talk for just a moment. The particularly conservatives have a hard time trusting the Western mainstream media. But the Western mainstream media is a slanted narrative. It's not just patently false. There are facts, but the facts are shaped to tell the story in maybe a slanted way. So it's like polluted water. But that's very different than raw sewage. And, and, and we, I think the polluted water versus raw sewage is an, an accurate analogy. And the reason that I say that is like you can still drink it. It's not necessarily, but you gotta you gotta understand it might you know cause some indigestion. If this was not the case, I would say go to this one source and don't worry about triangulating. Go to just read this or watch that guy. I don't say that, and I don't say that for a reason because you have to triangulate because they're not perfect. They don't get it right all the time, and maybe there's some bias to it. But the raw sewage that comes out of RT is just amazing. Now, here's why the raw sewage works the way it is. And watch this guy continue to talk, and then I'll explain it. We have to wrap our minds around the difference between the two, or we're just going to buy her raw sewage narrative. That freedom of speech is totally gone. I may be mistaken, but here's how I see one of your functions. You're a sort of feedback loop within the government. Wow, that's exactly right. That's exactly what her role at RT is. It's to propagate the government's message and then keep it going. They pay attention to you. You're not opposition. You support the government. But if you sound the alarm, it means that the excesses are so egregious that it should be noticed and perhaps reconsidered. Well, of course, that also means that she's going to be one of those people thrown off a balcony or sent to prison for tax evasion. She can sound the alarm. Can she really? Now, he goes on to cite a number of examples of things that he thought were wrong, like somebody going to jail for having spoken about the the war or uh, somebody who can no longer, who's being fined for uh, a play that was approved, but now it's no longer approved. These, and she's citing this. And people would say these kind of things here down below. And I 
highlighted these. So first, the polluted water and raw sewage is a great analogy for the difference between the two medias. I stand by that. I think that's absolutely correct. I think that is actually what's going on here. It's the difference between polluted water which is what Western media is. There is something not quite right with it, but it's far better than the raw sewage that you get from RT. And then this comment here by Antspace9158 is what really got me thinking this morning. I noticed that they often have a dissenting voice in these programs. I think to make it seem that there is some kind of freedom of speech, but all the others represent the state line. They drown out that voice of reason and create confusion around the subject at hand. That's intentional. I'm pretty sure that that's intentional. It's not like Crossfire with William Buckley back in the 70s and 80s that was an actual debate trying to show all sides of the equation. This is actually trying to show that, yeah, you brought that up, but we can smack it down. And there's a reason that they do something like that. So I'm going to show you a PowerPoint that I use in class. Now, as you know, I'm a professor who teaches leadership, management, organizational change, org behavior, uh, power and influence, all those kinds of classes. And here we're in an organizational change class. And uh, the slides that you're seeing are from uh, a book called Buy-In by John Cotter. John Cotter is a Harvard professor. He's the one of the leading experts in organizational change. And what he's talking about at this point is when, like, when you're trying to implement a change in an organization, there are people that want to stop it. And there are four good ways to kill an idea. Fear, like fear mongering, just, talk, oh, we can't do that. It's so dangerous. Or delay or confusion and ridicule. And I'm going to talk about confusion and ridicule here. So confusion is what I see RT doing a lot, or not just RT, but all Russian state media propaganda is designed to confuse us. It's designed to confuse us more than it is designed to convince us that this is right and that's wrong, although there is some of that that happens. But it's more designed to sow seeds of doubt or overwhelm or distract. And so here, if somebody, like you roll out a change project, you're a manager, and somebody is wanting to scuttle it, what are they going to do? They're going to try to distract and divert. Ah, we don't really need to do that right now. Or overwhelm and undermine or add so much complexity that it's going to be very, very difficult. But don't you see the same stuff happening in Russian state media? They, they're doing this all the time. They're distracting and diverting. Ukraine's doing this. The United States is doing that. China is so interested in helping us and, and all over the map. It's hard to focus. This could be lore, and I, I don't know if it is because I'm not a lion tamer. But I, you know, when the when the guy stands in the ring with the, at the circus with a lion, and he has a whip in one hand, and he has a chair in the other, and now why does he have a chair as a prop? I mean, that seems like a weird prop. The lore is that the lion has a hard time focusing on the four ends of the chair, right? So it, it's it's hard to tell like which one do I focus on. That's what. I see Russian state media doing as they're distracting and overwhelming and adding complexity so that people have a hard time following. So I'm going to read just a few of these slides because I think they're very valuable. Confusion, muddling the conversation with irrelevant facts, convoluted logic, or so many alternatives that it's impossible to have the clear and intelligent dialogue that builds buy-in. That's what, that's what they're trying to do in organizations, but that's kind of what they're trying to do in this Russian state media propaganda. Okay, ridicule. Ridicule is the other one. So sometimes I'm criticized for being too kind for these people. Well, I'm intentionally trying to not ridicule. I should be dealing with the facts of what they have to say, and I don't need to ridicule them in order to prove my point. And if I do ridicule them, then I've kind of actually lost ground, and here's why. So ridicule is attacking the person, not the proposal. It's trying to make them look silly or incompetent or shady. Now, they've done that to themselves, and I'm just showing you what they've done. I'm not saying, look at his hair. Can you believe he, he she went out of the house dressed like that? I can't believe it. I wouldn't show my face. I don't do that. There's no need to do that when you can deal with the merits of the argument. Now, uh, Kuzis and Posner in the Leadership Challenge talk about if you don't believe the messenger, you won't believe the message. And that applies to me as the messenger, as I have to be intellectually honest and credible as much as it applies to them with whatever their message is. And if I can expose that their message is incredible, or that they as a messenger aren't credible, then it's showing their message, right? And at the same time, I have to be aware of myself. Now he goes on and he says, we think, consciously or not, that everyone else does it. So why not us? Like, why not ridicule back? 
or that the ends always justify the means. Rarely do these cynical ideas work to the to our advantage. Don't do it. Just just don't do it. There's there's no reason. Take the high ground. Now he's talking about opponents. He says about opponents when they um, when they want to challenge your ideas. And this is what was going on, I think, in that scene where they had the one guy and then they had uh, the editor RT and the others that were on the other side of the equation. Don't scheme to keep potential oppo uh, keep potential opponents, even the sneakiest attackers, out of the discussion. Let them in, let them shoot at you, even encourage them to shoot at you. Now let's look at this on two levels. In an organization, if I'm trying to make a change and I'm, I'm the manager and I'm bringing out this proposal, now I should have talked to you about it first. Like, hey, what do you think about this? Let's kick this, these ideas around and gather your ideas. But Let's assume that I've done this. Now, I know that Bob in the back of the room, he does not like this at all. And he wants to, you know, shoot this full of holes. I don't want to have a meeting on the day that Bob is sick and pass it over his objection because now he's going to dig in and try to undermine me. What I do want to do is have the meeting with Bob in the room and let him bring every objection that he has because at that point, you know, everybody will hear, well, those were his objections and you answer the objections and... Okay. I mean, we're even more solid now. Now in RT, they're doing something that looks like it, but it's really not. You'll notice that they had this guy give his objections and then nobody really responded. They didn't bring in an American free, free speech lawyer from the ACLU or ACLJ to come and talk about free speech. They had this guy give a few rele relevant examples, but then they kind of discounted it. Let me continue. You want your adversaries there. You want to draw their attacks because it works to your advantage. You get people's attention and that leads to buy-in. Attention leads to understanding, which leads to emotional commitment. And so you must be participative. And that's in the American scenario, in, in our organizations, I want to be a participative leader. I want to actually engage with people. I want to answer their questions. And look, even if they don't get their way, because they got to have voice, because they got to speak up, they're not marching in the streets right? But that's a very different scenario than what you'll see in RT. They manipulate and script it. And then finally, they said this, don't try to crush attackers with ridicule, counterattacks, or condescension, even when it seems as though people deserve it. And, I, and you'll notice that that's the way that I function. I don't attack and I don't say, well, look at that stupid hair or how could you do? No, I, and I'm, I'm just trying to deal with the merits. And I think that's a, a very positive way about going about it and it just exposing what they are without having to be mean. Like I can still respect an individual's dignity as much as I despise what they have to say. And I think that's the way that you should be approaching this. But what they're doing in RT here is a sham version of this kind of thing. They're making it appear that they're having this real debate. They're not really having a debate. Uh, we all know that. All right. So I hope that helps you think about what just happened in that video that we watched yesterday. And if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch it. It's really uh, worth watching. It, it is, it's a um, fairly insightful video about how the Russians actually think about the issue of free speech. Okay. That's all that I have. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine. I'll be back again, and I hope you will be too.